share our screen. So let us start with worship, my friends. There we go. Um, so if you weren't here earlier, um, we are going to have communion today. So if you do not have your communion elements, uh, now would be a great time to go and get those. Um, and remember, it can be anything. I use water and Triscuits uh, because I don't keep grape juice on hand readily. I know, bad Methodist pastor, bad. Um, but water works just as well. And so does wine. You're at your home. Um, so do what you need. Uh, all right, friends, uh, let's start off with a couple announcements before we begin with worship. Couple of announcements this morning, uh, our book study, so you wanna talk about race, is gonna continue this week. We're gonna have it on Thursday at six. And we're kind of wrapping up the book study at this point. We're going to, we've done a lot of talking, we've done a lot of digging, a lot of repentance, and now we're gonna kind of figure out where we go from here. Um, and so this small group may evolve and continue into, um, to something else if you wanna join that conversation and figure out what our next steps can be as a community um, and as a community of faith, I invite you to join us six o'clock on the 10th. Uh, a big thing that I want you all to be aware of, uh, our COVID response task force at the church, um, we, we, really, we really, for the sake of transparency, we want to have an open conversation with all of you about why we've made some of the decisions we've made and what the decisions uh, we're making going forward. And so we're gonna have two options for a Q&A with the task force uh, on the 10th of September at one o'clock and the 11th of September at seven o'clock. Our hope is that we can kind of get the bulk of you um, who are interested uh, with those times. Uh, they will be recorded and you can send in questions and concerns ahead of time to the church email. Just put something in the subject line about um, the COVID task force Q&A and we'll make sure to collect those and then we can address those. So if you can't make the meeting, the, the call for whatever reason, we'll have it recorded and you can look at it um, afterwards on our YouTube channel and we'll put links and everything in our midweek message. Uh, UMW is meeting this Tuesday at 12 o'clock, but you'll need to get a hold of Francis for the Zoom information if you're interested. Francis. I sent an email uh, to lots of folks and also to the church, so if you could send that out uh, tomorrow to the world, uh, that would be great. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, there's communion today. Again, if you don't have your elements, I would advise you to go ahead and grab those um, unless you want to do a spiritual communion and um, just sit with us in a time of meditation. And there's no children's Zoom this week. With the holiday, um, a lot of our kids are out and uh, Miss Jordan is also out uh, and taking some time for rest, which is really good. So no children's Zoom this week. And if you have signed up for the conference pilgrimage journey, the pilgrimage of love, um, we're having a reaffirmation of our baptism and kicking off the pilgrimage tonight at six. Uh, if you have not registered for that, but you wanna be a part of it, um, text me, email me, let me know, and we'll see how we can get you involved. Are there any other announcements before we get going? All right, see none. Let us move to our prelude.
Caleb. I invite you to join with me in our opening prayer. On this day of rejoicing, O God of our ancestors, as we gather to break the bread, we remember that through the blood of the Lamb you redeemed us and made us pass over from death to new life. Open our hearts for worship this morning that we may be renewed and transformed by your spirit and your grace. Grant us that as we celebrate your mighty deeds, we may be one with Jesus in offering you the sacrifice of praise. Amen. And for our call to worship this morning, I want to invite Veronica, our liturgist, to unmute um, as we as we begin. <clears throat> My friends, the Lord bore you on eagles' wings to enter into a covenant with you. Now, therefore, if you will obey the Lord and keep the covenant, you shall be the Lord's own possession among all the peoples. We will obey the Lord's voice and keep the covenant. The Lord bore you on eagles' wings to establish a community of heaven on earth. Now, therefore, if you will obey the Lord and keep the covenant, you shall be the Lord's ambassadors to all peoples. We will obey the Lord's voice and keep the covenant. All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. O gracious one, you have promised that wherever two or three of us are gathered in person or virtual in your name, you will be present. Today we have gathered here to claim that promise. Now, as we praise your name with our lips, let us feel, let us feel your spirit move in our hearts. Amen. Amen. And our first hymn this morning is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Thank you, Charles, Wesley, uh, and Caleb will lead us in our hymn.
first scripture reading this morning comes from Romans chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covenant, covet, and any other commandment are summed up in these words, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment you, uh, you, sorry, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us than now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and in, in drunkenness. Okay, these are hard. Okay, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Thank you, Veronica. <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> Yeah, those scriptural will get you sometimes, man. Uh, as we move into our times of joys and concerns, I want to ask uh, and invite you to share. You can unmute yourself as you feel so called. Otherwise, I'll have the chat box up. Um, what brought you joy this week? Where, where did you find glimmers of hope? Either in something that you discovered you did or in something that someone else has done. I have a joy, Amber. <clears throat> so um, I started a new position at my school with remote learning. And so that meant all the ch all the families who felt in Monta Vista, Bill Metz, who felt unsafe to come back to school, they chose this remote learning platform, which is like really complicated and hard. Um, but we're seeing glimmers of it, like really helping families and making families feel safe. And I even got to teach a little bit for an hour instead of like just being on the computer putting out fires so it was kind of cool to to teach and see kids instead of just like you know typing and putting fires out on the computer so that was my good thing that is a joy thanks for sharing veronica are there any other joys this week doug and i went camping and fishing and backpacking uh we did the segment 13 on the Colorado Trail between Buena Vista and uh, Salida. And uh, so we had, I had many thin place moments as we were out among nature and just enjoying um, God's creation. Um, the moon, the full moon coming up while we were camping was unbelievable. It looked like a big flashlight coming right down the valley where we were. It was beautiful. And oh, I, wow. And I have something to share too. Um, it's nice to sit here and be able to hear Caleb play the piano and already hear that graduate school is shaping who he is as a musician. I'm so proud and love that young man so much. Thank you for being in our lives still, Caleb. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Sorry, my heart is very happy. Uh, are there any other? any other joys this week that we want to share with one another i have oops yeah can you hear me yeah holly okay um so we've been enjoying the warblers flying around on our bushes and on the lawns you know the little yellow uh wilson's warblers that some people call the rocky mountain canaries gosh they're just everywhere this year and we have a kitten, uh, she's a year old, and so we've been enjoying watching the warblers and her watching the warblers. And of course, wishing she could um, get close to them and they don't wanna be friends. It's been a lot of fun. 
<laughs> my cats have also really enjoyed them. They like blanket the backyard. And so like, I'll let the cats out and like this whole like Timon, Pumbaa, rushing the hyenas kind of thing. Um, it's, it's excellent. We uh, Corey had, went, oh, sorry, go ahead. We also had a, a wonderful camping trip with my siblings and some spouses and a cousin. Oh, I'm glad the camping trip went well. And you got to see all of your family. Uh, Corey wants to lift up that they are thankful for all the teachers and staff at the schools uh, for all of their hard work to help the kids go back to school. Absolutely. And I don't remember if it was last week or the week before, um, but I think classrooms and um, Veronica, I know you're in Monte Vista, but um, that classrooms are still in need of hand soap because the kids have to wash their hands every time they come back into a classroom um, if they're in person. Um, uh, and I found them for a dollar at Walgreens. Yes, Elise. Do they want bars or um, nope. plungers, the foam yeah. soap? Squeezy oh. soap. Okay. Uh, yeah. One of my joys right now is that I can walk down the middle of First Street with no traffic. <laughs> and I'm apparently going to enjoy that for just about two more weeks before they're done paving it and opening the street. So. And I, and I really enjoy visiting with the uh, construction workers that are working on the street. So it's been a great summer of just walking down the middle of the road. <laughs> it has been kind of fun. I'm not gonna lie. I have also done that. Well, my friends, do we have any concerns that we wanna lift up? Any prayer requests? Um, that we want to lift up in prayer. I'm praying I, for my garden <laughs> with the snow yeah. coming up this, this, uh, Tuesday. I've got a lot of harvesting to do and putting up to, to feed ourselves for the week or for the year, I should say. Um, the second thing is I know that, uh, the, there is a worker for the Democratic Party that's supposed to be coming down here, I think, and they're looking for housing for a couple of months for this woman. Um, so if you know of anyone who could provide housing, uh, get a hold of Jan Owen uh, or get a hold of me and I'll pass your info on to that. Um, I'd like to ask for prayers for all the college students and professors that are in quarantine right now um i don't know if they know what that needs to look like or like how they even get food or mental health care or anything so just prayers for them many of the students like their quarantine but their roommates not so their roommate can go in and out but they're stuck so just prayers for them and the professors that's, that's not how quarantine works it is an autumn state Okay, <laughs> we will hold them in prayer. <laughs> as far as I know, that's my understanding. Maybe hopefully I'm wrong, but. I, I like for us to keep in prayer the, the people that are struggling with the wildfires in California, even though some of them are out, they're still smoldering and there's still the possibility of flare ups there. And also for the people in Louisiana, Texas, and points north that are gonna be spending a lot of time cleaning up after Hurricane Laura. Yes, my, um, my family is still without power. They have water, but they're still under a boil advisory. Um, and it's, uh, it's still all kinds of chaotic down there. So, yes. Please, please keep them in prayer. Um, and UMCOR is there already, our United Methodist Committee on Relief. Um, they set up my first mentor. Uh, her church got co almost completely demolished. Uh, university 
United Methodist Church um, almost completely gone. And, uh, and so they're working really closely with UMCOR um, on disaster relief uh, and support down there. All right, dear friends, are there any other joys or concerns this morning? Okay, so this morning I want to invite us into a congregational prayer. So will you pray with me? Gracious Lord of creation, you have made us one in our dependence on you and one another. You have so ordered existence that through our fellowship with others, we discover our need for communion with you. You have called us to be your witnesses. All too often, we have failed your summons. Occasionally, we have hated evil, held fast to the good, and have been affectionately devoted to one another. Yet we have seldom been zealous in showing honor, patience in enduring tribulation, or generous in responding to our siblings. If we have remembered to rejoice with those who rejoice, we have forgotten to weep with those who weep. If we have denounced the flagrant abuses of those in power over us, we have winked at the vices of those who live around us. For all these transgressions, whether of omission or commission, we ask your forgiveness, O God. You have called us to liberate the oppressed, yet half the world's people have never known life without oppression. You have called us to set the prisoners free, yet we continue policies and condemn persons to a life of bondage. Renew within us, dear Lord, our commitment to the victims of the world's injustice. Today, we have been quick to seek your help against the world's injustice. Grant that in the struggle for justice, we shall be quick as quick to offer you our help. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning is from Matthew 18. So hear these words, this is Jesus talking. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out that fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. For truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Be to God. This week, Austin Channing Brown posed a question. Austin is a writer, speaker, and theologian. And her latest book uh, is titled, I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness. So, you know, if you're looking for new reading material, there it is. But she posed a question this week that became the root of my reflection. What does the world need from me right now? As a pastor, I, my hope is that I, what I offer in times of peace are reminders to remain steadfast and not to sink into complacency. And that what I offer in times of strife are reminders of the importance of community, of accountability, and overall groundedness, all wrapped up in a celebration of sacraments and in telling the word. So, well, for you, I hope that you sit with, your question, with that question in your day-to-day. -day. Um, 
fair warning, try and steal, steer clear of any individual saviorism. Um, remember, we already have a savior, it's Jesus. But this morning, I wanna delve into a modified version of this question. What does the world need from us, the church, right now? And again, we're gonna try and stay away from saviorism. Uh, it really would honestly be tacky on a day we're celebrating the Eucharist. So that's the question I want us to pose this morning. Now this week, also, uh, all the clergy across our vast conference attended a three-hour call with our bishop and a visiting Presbyterian minister who serves as a clinical therapist and counselor to talk about stress and healthy boundaries. And it turns out we're all in various stages of what he's calling high-functioning depression. Yay! That was a super fun conversation, let me tell you. But over the talk, uh, probably because we're all pastors struggling to find hope in the midst of chaos. Um, I shared what my hope was, my hope that, that I see in all of you is the resiliency that you show, not by attendance in service, but by your willingness to strive and care for the safety of others while continuing to find ways to serve and care for our neighbors in the community. There was some talk also in this three hour call about the resiliency of the church as a whole. And there was even some mention about how the church has become outdated and it's, it's not worth people's time as our attendance rates struggle. And I had to laugh because for a denomination whose mission statement is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, we seem very preoccupied with numbers. But to humor it, let's get into it. I reread a book this week as I was thinking about this obsession uh, that kept coming up in that call. Uh, I reread a book that I read in seminary titled A Royal Waste of Time, The Splendor of Worshiping God and Being Church for the World. Because I wanted to tackle that question, is worship a royal waste of time? I mean, think about it. Realistically, the world is burning, and in many places, quite literally. So what's the point of getting in front of a screen for an hour each week? We're fighting our reality of living in a pandemic while trying to uphold norms and means from a pre-pandemic world, holding on to expectations of how things were and that it needs to be that way now but that doesn't work well because we have to remember to keep ourselves in context just like with our gospel reading this morning we said it in our call to worship our prayer this morning um and I, I've been guilty of this too, this gospel reading where, where we quote the verse in Matthew where two or three are gathered, there the spirit of the Lord is. And that's really comforting, it is. Especially in our current diaspora state where we're spread out all over and we're not able to be together in person. But in the context of this narrative, Jesus is using this as a comment on strife among those in the community. If you find harm against another, seek ways to find peace. Seek a third party and talk it out. Find the peace, and when you do this, God will be with you. God will be with you for guidance and hope. And if you cannot come together with just the struggling parties, you find more and you keep finding more to find accountability because where accountability is, there is grace and understanding. And with strife all around us, we have to be able as the church body to work out the strife among us. But there's a catch because we have to want to be able to work it out. We have to be willing to seek out that peace. 
John Wesley said that it is only when we are knit together that we have nourishment from God and increase with the increase of God. Neither is there any time when the weakest member can say to the strongest or the strongest to the weakest, I have no need of thee. Wanting peace is not wanting to be right. I'm going to say that again. Wanting peace is not wanting to be right. There's a difference. It takes great mercy and humility in truly admitting our faults and acknowledging when we're wrong. That's what I mean in, in wanting to be willing to seek out that peace. Because we disagree on many things, but what knits us together is our love and desire for God to not only be a part of our lives, but that our lives reflect the transformation and continuing salvific work of following Christ. We, my friends, our community. Currently, we're a community in diaspora, but a community nonetheless. And this difference is hard, but hasn't the church survived so much more in its history? We are six months now into continuous transition and learning, and I want you to think about what you've learned about yourself. Each week, I ask you what brought you joy this week. And for some of us, that's getting together and seeing the faces of those with whom we have knitted ourselves together. And for others, it's escaping their homes for outdoor freedoms as their home has been overtaken with work and is no longer a safe place for rest. And I want you to hear me on this because this isn't a guilt trip sermon. I, I truly want you to find what you need, but it's my job to help you care for your soul. That's important to me, especially in times of strife, to find where the spirit is moving among us and with us, which is why one of the things that we're working on is working on basic home altar kits and making worship more accessible. So if you need some singing and psalms at 11 o'clock at night, you have singing and psalms with familiar faces when you need them. Because my friends, we are knit in this chaos together. And being together, I don't believe that worship is a royal waste of time. Because the greatest deception that we convince ourselves of is that worship is about us. Spoilers, it's not. We factor in, of course, our discipleship and our spiritual maturity, our fruits of engaging with worship and with one another. But worship is a time set aside for the community to, like the Psalms say, lift up our voice and praise the one who formed us, who guides us through times of strife and conflict, who weeps when we weep, and loves us with a love that can never be taken away. And our role as Christians, as, as members of this body of Christ, is not to protect God or protect our building. Our role is to wonder at the God who brings us awe. Scripture is, is filled with stories and narratives of, of God bringing people to their knees weeping even at the sound of God's voice, at the very presence of God's spirit. Now, that may not feel the case as our homes have now turned into church and work and family, but I wanna offer you this reminder that God specializes in making sacred the ordinary. God's really good at that. And so in our diaspora, what does the world need from us, the church right now? What is our context for ministry? You may have answers, and the longer you sit with this question, those answers may change. And I wanna offer this to you, that the world needs our support. 
because we've we've been almost forced into a, a beginning acts style church that we're back into the community to serve as Christ came to serve as we work with one another to feed the poor to advocate for the oppressed to clothe the naked and empower the widow and while it seems that the pandemic has taken away our sense of togetherness the context that we once knew nothing can separate us from god's love or god's ability to move through us and with us for the transformation of the world and Paul, in our Romans reading today, reminds us to remain steadfast in that very love. Because that love is where we find our context as the church. That only in the light of Christ and the Holy Trinity that made and sustains and guides us through chaos and the uncertainty of life, we find our place. We find that we are knitted together through the connection that Christ has established with those who seek him. And our worship is a part of that journey, however that worship looks. May we find hope in that unseen bond of connection that God weaves for us, for ourselves and others. And so as we enter into a time of communion and eventually leave this worship space this morning, I want to invite you to sit with this question. What is your context for worship? Do we worship to check off a box and say that I'm a good Christian? Or do we worship for the sake of needing that constant reminder to stay grounded as we set aside time to turn our hearts to God? And how does that look for you? And finally, I want, I want you to ask what the world needs from us right now. I invite you to join us, uh, Veronica and I, in this litany this morning. The Lord does not call us to conform to the demands of this world. The Lord calls us to transform the world by our obedience to the demands of God. When our neighbors curse us, let us not curse them in return. Let us love as you love, O Lord. Let us love to be genuine. Let our love to be genuine. When our neighbors seek our help, let us not leave them to the charity of the wealthy or those in power. Let us love as you love, O oh Lord. Let our love be genuine. When our neighbors hunger or thirst, let us minister to them according to their need. Let us love as you love, O oh Lord. Let our love be genuine. Let us not be overcome by evil. Let us overcome evil with good. All right, with dear friends, as we enter to a time of communion, I ask that you get your elements ready. And let us hear this invitation this morning. That Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Me, sorry. Sorry, it's okay. Sorry, I'm, my my box of people are over the words. That's okay. I have to move my, I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Merciful God, merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free, free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Now hear the good news, that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Veronica, I want to thank you for that, because that's the first time I've heard that um, since we started online worship. So um, thank you. Yeah. For our response, I'm going to invite you uh, to sing with me in our doxology as we praise God's name. Caleb? This has been a while since I've done this one, so. <laughs> All right, if you join with me. That was wonderful. All right, dear friends, may the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You who formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation and neither shall they learn to war no more. And so with your people on earth and all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, and recovering a sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would come and save your people. Christ healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, God, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. At Christ's ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, almighty God. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, God. Gave it, to his, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here, wherever we are, and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, with the confidence of the children of God, may we be so bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now as we enter into this time for taking the bread and cup, uh, Caleb will uh, play some music for us so we can have a moment of silence. My friends, the feast is prepared and it is before you. Won't you come as you are able and partake in this glorious feast, freely given to be freely received. Thanks be to God. Let us join in our prayer following communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And will you join with me in our closing prayer? We are indebted to nobody, O Lord, for you are the source of our good. Yet we are indebted to everybody, O Lord, because you are the source of all good. Therefore, we beseech you, O God, make us grateful and gracious debtors, that your goodness may abound on earth as it is in heaven. Now may we go in peace in search of your peace that we may be good stewards and servants of your grace and call to love our neighbors as you so love us. Amen. I know we sang it recently, but I found it very appropriate for this morning. So our closing hymn is the servant song. Uh, and Caleb will 
lead us. My friends, we are definitely on a journey. And let us be reminded that we are on this journey together and we are not alone. So I wanna thank you for joining us for worship. And I'm gonna stop sharing if you wanna stay on for a time of fellowship. That's not what I wanted. Uh, if you wanna stay on for a time of fellowship, I so invite you to do so. And, and if not, I will see you when I see you, my beloved diaspora community, 